Okay, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians, and we're going to start here with chapter 1. Now, 1 Corinthians was written by the Apostle Paul. It says it right there in verse 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle. And so if we want to go back, you've already read Acts 18, Paul's second missionary journey. It says Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. So if you want to, just a quick little reminder of this, Paul was going all throughout this area, preaching the gospel, starting churches. He went from Athens down here in Greece to Corinth, and Corinth was another huge, major Gentile city, and Paul's preaching the gospel there in Corinth. Back to Acts 18 real quick. And so go back to go back to this passage if you want to learn more about this, but you know, he's preaching in the synagogues there in Corinth, but there's a lot of people rejecting him, so he went to the Gentiles, which just means the non-Jews, and so he starts preaching to the Gentiles, and it says that many others in Corinth heard Paul and became believers and were baptized. And he stayed there a long time preaching the word of God and establishing the church in Corinth. And so 1 Corinthians is Paul's first letter back to that church a a few years later after he'd heard that the church had uh, sort of strayed from some of the basic things that he taught them. And really what we're going to learn in 1 Corinthians is that church in Corinth was pretty dysfunctional. And so Paul's writing this letter back to them to uh, to teach them to remember those basic things and to live the way that God wants them to live. In fact, he says in verse 2, I'm writing to God's church in Corinth, to you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. God made you holy by means of Christ, he's saying. And what he's telling them is, don't forget that. Now, in our resources, we call that foundations truth number two, that we live to honor God. As Christians, we should live to honor God. And so that's what he's reminding them to do. And keep that in mind as you read through 1 Corinthians. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. You notice one of the things is they had divisions in the church. In verse 10, he says, I appeal to you to live in harmony and don't don't allow there to be divisions. Because apparently what had happened is they all had their favorite preachers. And so some of them liked Paul and some of them liked Apollos and And some of them like Peter and Paul saying to them, listen, none of that matters. It's all about Jesus. There shouldn't be divisions. Don't be dysfunctional church. And then he goes on in this, in, at the end of the chapter, he says, the message of Jesus is foolishness to everyone. And and I think he's relating this to this whole kind of idea of Greek philosophy. You know, the Greeks back then, they loved their philosophers and they, they thought it was about following a teacher or a philosopher. And Paul's saying, it's not about that. He says in verse 20, where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? He says, God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. What he's saying, it's about the message. It's not about the messenger. And what he's what he's trying to teach them is that the even the message of the cross is foolishness to the modern Greek mind. Because I mean, think about at the heart of the message, God became man and died for us. Like, it, this doesn't even make sense to most philosophers, but this is what God did. This is what Jesus did, and Paul is calling them to that simple truth. He's calling them back to the beauty of that simple truth. It's foolishness to the world, but to those who were receiving it, it was the power of God. And, and so this is really a great introduction to 1 Corinthians. So you can go ahead and read this first chapter now and, and allow God's Word to speak this timeless message to you even today. And then we'll see you tomorrow for chapter two.